today. He was 86. Born in Horik, he began commentating before his 10th birthday by copying the voices he heard on radio. And the former PE teacher went on to earn the respect of players, colleagues and fans as one of the most knowledgeable commentators rugby has ever seen. In a moment we'll cross live to his hometown of Hoyt, but first John Beatty looks back on his life. This is Schneeman, Ardea to Montgomery, it's a magnificent try. Scott shot-handed, but what a score. Bill McLaren's voice was instantly recognisable. Generations of rugby fans listened on radio and then on television to a man they believed to be fair, knowledgeable and a lover of the game. His voice, like this occasion in 1976 when he commentated on his son-in-law Alan Lawson scoring against England, was almost operatic in its clarity and range. He could convey excitement to that bias like no other. He had the most magnificent voice you could have ever heard, uh, great Hoyt twang. He obviously had uh, tremendous experience of the game. Um, a lot of people don't understand or don't appreciate just how dedicated he was to the game because uh, he was such an expert because he did so much homework. You know, he researched the game more than anyone I could think of. That research was legendary. Bill McLaren would spend days watching teams train in the week before a commentary, and then spend nights practicing with his own special packet of cards. Just listen to this piece of commentary. Scotland against England, 1990, a grand slam at stake, and the amount of information McLaren gives the viewers. A magnificent try for the 21-year-old. His first try in a championship match, but his sixth try for Scotland in his sixth international. Even if you didn't think you understood anything about rugby, somehow uh, Bill McLaren gave you the confidence to understand and listen to what he was saying. And it was always the same. It was clear. It was interesting and always unbiased. As a 20-year-old, Bill McLaren fought at Monte Cassino, one of the Second World War's bloodiest theatres. He had been in line to play rugby for Scotland, but contracted tuberculosis. Rugby's loss was the BBC's gain. He wasn't a full-time commentator. His day job was as a primary school PE teacher in Hoyt, who loved nothing more than coaching his pupils in rugby. Well done, young Bell. Oh, that was splendid. Fast clap. But if that was his day job, his weekend job made sure he was heard and admired all over the world. Child growing up from the early hours of the morning, lying in front of the TV with Dad, the thing that's almost home, I suppose, that that boy, so to speak. Um, and then to actually play in a chair to be commentating on. Um, yeah, it's just, just amazing to. On behalf of the French television. After a distinguished career, McLaren retired in 2002. And as you know, you are the number one. But the game has been left richer by the legacy of its finest ever voice. As you've been hearing, it was Hoyk where Bill McLaren was born and spent most of his life. Our reporter, Morag Kinneborough, is at the town's rugby club tonight. Morag, a sad day for the Borders town. A very sad day for Hoyk and for the wider world of rugby, but also a day to reflect on very many happy memories and to, to get some sense of, of how great the local pride was in this man. Now, Bill McLaren himself was so deeply proud of Hoyk. He used to say every day spent out of the town was a day wasted, so, so deep was his love for his hometown. As we've been speaking to people across the borders during the day today, it's been quite clear that those who worked with him, who uh, played rugby with him, grew up with him, or were taught by him, even those who, who simply knew him as a famous border, were very, very fond of him. But he wasn't just a great rugby player's man. He was admired by all kinds of people. It's just so sad. A wonderful man, such a hoik man. We all love him. One of the best. One of the best. It was, you know, everyone knows him. 
He coached me when I was uh, at a primary school. He bedroomed the corner for us and uh, he was really a great man. He should have been 90. He should have been uh, it's too late now. Well, he may not have been knighted, but Bill McLaren was awarded the MBE, the OBE and the CBE. And this evening there are talks here in the, the Mansfield Park behind me uh, about setting up some kind of long-lasting uh, memorial to Bill McLaren. Talk of a museum in the town here with a, a charitable and educational side to it. We know there'll be a funeral in the next few days and then the Scottish Rugby Union says they're planning another service in Edinburgh as well as an event in Murrayfield thereafter so that as many people as want to can pay tribute to the voice of rugby. Morag in Hoyk, many thanks. A court has been hearing how an 85-year-old Edinburgh man launched a vicious knife.